A new dawn for the oldest space shuttle in the fleet, Columbia. Morning fog has lifted and the final countdown is underway in Florida for launch of the refurbished shuttle Columbia. Wind and weather, we are told, are within acceptable limits for liftoff on this classified mission for the United States military. An all-military shuttle crew of five commanded by U.S. Air Force Colonel Rooster Shaw. Because the mission is officially classified, you won't be hearing official word of the nature of the mission. The main payload is believed to be a new generation Spy in the Sky satellite. This mission comes at a turning point in the post-Challenger disaster shuttle program. The Pentagon planning to rely less on the NASA shuttle, the manned shuttle, and more on its own new fleet of heavy payload unmanned Titan rockets. CBS News correspondent Bruce Hall has the latest now from the Kennedy Space Center. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning, Dan. There was a delay of about 40 minutes this morning because of fog and haze over the launch pad area. That has cleared, and we're now proceeding for a launch. On this flight, it is a five-man crew, all military crew. Only two have flown before. The commander, Brewster Shaw, rock and roll guitarist in his youth, now a space veteran who's flown twice before. Pilot Dick Richards, a space rookie, but he has nearly 4,000 hours of flying time in more than 15 types of aircraft. Mission Specialist Dave Liesma tested satellite refueling techniques during a 1984 spacewalk. Mark Brown worked on the solid rocket booster redesign after Challenger and is the youngest crew member at 37. James Adamson is an all-American sharpshooter, an avid outdoorsman, a former West Point professor. Crew was selected in 85 and been waiting for this flight for four years. Well aware, however, the last time NASA tried to launch Columbia, there were lots and lots of delays. Six times they failed on the countdown and didn't launch until the 7th. T-minus three minutes, 30 seconds. All three of Columbia's main engines are now being steered, which will verify their readiness for flight control. When this check is complete, they'll be aligned to their main engine start position. We're just outside the three minutes to launch mark now. The duration of this mission is classified, but uh, sources indicate that it's scheduled to last slightly more than five days, and that if all goes well with the launch today and the mission, Columbia will be back on the ground at Edwards Air Force Base in California, northeast of uh, Los Angeles, about 7 a.m. Pacific time on Sunday. Let's pick up the countdown now for this uh, launch of Columbia, the first time Columbia will have gone up since the Challenger disaster. oxygen vent hood or the beanie cap on the external tank. The computers will make a final check to ensure that the vent arm is fully retracted at the T-minus 37 second point. T-minus 2 minutes, 20 seconds. Ground supplies of hydrogen and oxygen for the orbiter fuel cells have been turned off. Columbia is now running on its, in, its onboard reactants. The orbiter test conductor has asked pilot Dick Richards to clear the caution and warning memory system. He reports that that clearing is completed and he reported no expected error. T-minus 2 minutes. The crew has just been told to close their visors on their launch and reentry helmets and to start the oxygen supply to their pressure suits. T-minus one minute, 50 seconds. The liquid hydrogen replenishing of the external tank has stopped and the tank is now being pressurized to flight level. The space shuttle is now isolated from all ground propellant and fluid loading equipment. T-minus one minute, 30 seconds. We're less than a minute and a half away now from the launch of STS-28 and its crew of five astronauts. At uh, T-minus one minute, the ground launch sequencer will verify that the shuttle main engines are ready to start. T-minus one fifteen, the liquid hydrogen tank is now at flight pressure. T-minus one minute, the sound suppression water system is now armed. The water will be released at T-minus 16 seconds at a flow rate of 900,000 gallons per minute. The heaters around the solid rocket booster joints have now been turned off. The hydrogen burn igniters have now been armed. The igniters will be fired at T-minus 10 seconds to burn off any residual hydrogen. The solid rocket booster flight instrumentation recorders have gone into the record mode. The external tank heaters on the ET to orbiter attach fittings have been turned off. We've now had the 
handoff to the ground launch sequencer. We have a go for auto sequence start. The ground launch sequencer has handed off to Columbia. The shuttle now controlling. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. The SRB nozzle gimbal profile is now underway. T minus 10, we have go for main engine start. Seven, six, go for main engine start. Four, three, two, one. And liftoff, liftoff on Columbia and its return to flight. This is Mission Control, Houston Roll Program. the most critical time now will be at one minute and six seconds into the flight. That's when the trouble came for Challenger. Just a few seconds away now when the command is given, go at throttle up. Good throttles confirmed by the flight dynamics officer. just been given the go at throttle up call by mission control altitude 62,000 feet downrange about seven nautical miles and the space shuttle Columbia has passed through one of its most critical stages headed for outer space three good APUs three good fuel cells three good main engines current altitude 100,000 feet downrange 13 nautical miles Next most critical point, just past two minutes at 2.04 when the booster rocket shut down and separation from shuttle is scheduled to occur. Standing by for SRB separation, and we have SRB separation. Separation accomplished, all three main engines now firing. Downrange, Dan, 30 this is some of the best pictures now, we've ever seen of the separation feet. of the solid rocket boosters, which has been a problem in the uh, program Velocity several times. Velocity is 4,300 feet per second. Dan Rather in New York with Bruce Hall in Florida, part of our live CBS News coverage of this morning's launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia. Two minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. Still have uh, three good main engines running at 104%, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Current altitude, uh, 244,000 feet, downrange, 51 nautical miles. Bruce, the next critical point yeah, comes at just now. past uh, four. And the two-engine towel call. Point of uh, negative return, meaning that uh, just past the four-minute mark into the flight, yeah. if there is trouble, the shuttle could no longer abort the mission by returning to the Kennedy Space Center. If it uh, had any difficulty now, it would have to go on to a alternate landing zone, a transatlantic landing zone in Zaragoza, Spain for this particular flight and uh, we have never had a transatlantic landing and that is something that NASA fears quite a bit because it is uh, something they want to always be able to bring the shuttle back to the United States and in just a uh, few moments the uh, would be able to come to the U.S. again. Bruce so showing a videotape of the liftoff just a few moments ago of Columbia. No matter how many times you've seen it, we've seen the shuttle liftoff uh, 30 times now. It, uh... It's a beautiful sight, and particularly when you're here, Dan, because you feel the shuttle, and the whole building, as always, shakes. You'll notice on this particular one, it seems to be going virtually straight up and then it rolls over. This is moving toward the north it is going to, which indicates that it will be taking a northerly coast uh, right up the east coast and probably over Nova Maybe Scotia start. and heading out uh, Four, three, toward two, the Soviet Union, China, and, and the Middle East. Lift off. Lift off on Columbia and its return, return to so flight. Everything appears to be going very well. 
There are no problems this with massive seas at all at this particular time. And as we look at this view of the launch, it's going through the haze and the fog, so you lose the picture rather quickly from the ground. But uh, it appears that everything is uh, going very well. And NASA's initial reports that they are giving us right here say that they see no problems at all. For our viewers and listeners, we're showing you various uh, shots, videotape of the liftoff, which occurred uh, just over four minutes four, ago. Three, two, one. And liftoff. Dan, we're not the only ones that are viewing this particular launch uh, about 30 miles off the coast. It's a Russian trawler. They were down here this last week to view the uh, Trident uh, liftoff, and they stuck around, and they confirmed just a short while ago that the Russian trawler is still about 30 miles off the coast. Particularly interested in this flight because it supposedly does have the spy satellite that will be deployed over the uh, Soviet Union. So the Russians are getting a first-hand look at this. Currently throttling down to 97 percent and uh, throttling down now to 65 percent. Well, part of the purpose of this mission, uh, reportedly, we say reportedly because no official announcement uh, has been made. Uh, one report is that uh, the shuttle will put uh, into orbit an advanced strategic response. That's a quote, strategic response, photo reconnaissance satellite. That would be a satellite capable of taking ultra-sharp pictures uh, from outer space. Keep in mind that both the Soviets and the French, yes, the Soviets and the French, right now have better capability in some ways of close-up uh, pictures of things on Earth from outer space. And uh, this particular mission of Columbia, if it gets uh, this advanced strategic response photo reconnaissance satellite into place, uh, may help address that. Now, other space experts have talked about Columbia on this mission. Uh, delivering a primary payload of radar imaging satellite uh, identical to one launch, uh, launched from the shuttle Atlantis uh, in December. Now, this kind of uh, radar imaging uh, satellite is the kind of satellite uh, that is deployed by an astronaut using the shuttle's 50-foot robot arm. That's the one manufactured in Canada. Uh, the satellite, once in place, uses radar beams to take photo-like images despite cloud cover and uh, interruptions such as lightning. These are the kinds of uh, things that it's believed that Columbia may be putting into space on this uh, secret and military mission. All seems well with the flight at this moment. Uh, space Shuttle Columbia up and away on our 30th uh, shuttle mission for the United States. If and when there are any developments that merit our being on the air, we will, of course, do so during the day. We'll have full details on tonight's uh, CBS Evening News. So, until then, Dan Rather with Bruce Hall. Good morning. and it's return to flight. This is CBS.